how long do the handles on your lathe tools need to be? Of course, long tool handles are always stylish, but is a long handle always necessary? Now, very early on, I started making tool handles for my lathe tools, and I found plenty of information on how to go about making tool handles, uh, but one thing I was never quite certain of was how long does a tool handle need to be? Is it just all a matter of preference? Is longer really stylish? Or is there some kind of criteria that you can use to figure out how long, what's the minimum length that a tool handle needs to be on a tool? Now if I might digress just for a moment um, to point out one thing I like to do and I encourage other turners to do is to buy unhandled versions of tools if you can get them. Uh, and that way you can make your own tool handle. And so there's a lot of reasons why you want to make your own tool handle. Um, as a beginner, it's good practice uh, doing some spindle turning. Uh, beyond that, uh, even for an experienced turner, I like to be able to design uh, the, 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 to the handle the way I like it and with the material I like to. Um, for instance, uh, this is my 4040 bulk gouge, and I use this quite a bit. I might use this for extended periods of time. So I wanted, and I needed a fairly long handle for this, but I didn't want to have anything too heavy. So I went with black walnut. Black walnut has the same bending strength as oak, but it's a lot lighter. As an example of uh, the style of the handle, I always like to have the extra bump close to the tool. Uh, that way I can use it with maximum leverage by holding it at the end of the tool, or in some cases, if I need to do a little bit of detail, and I, don't wanna, and I have this tool in my hand already and I don't want to swap, and I'm not going to be over the tool rest too much, I can grab the tool really close up here. And finally, uh, if I make my own tool handle, getting back to the topic of the video, I can make sure my tool handle is long enough uh, for the way I want to use this tool. Now I've gone as far as if I can't find a tool unhandled, I'll buy the handle tool and I'll actually replace the handle. Uh, my 4040 boil gouges, uh, all came with handles, they're hamlets, um, and, uh, but I found the handles much too short. So I popped the original handle off, made my own handle out of walnut, and then you can always reuse. This is the original handle from the hamlet. Um, it was an actually the ideal size for negative brake scraper. So I saved the handle and just used it uh, on a tool that was more appropriate for that handle size. So what is the criteria for how long a tool handle needs to be? Well, there is some secondary criteria. Now, obviously, if this tool handle was too long and too heavy, uh, that would no longer be practical. Uh, I also find that there's some situations where a long tool handle can actually get in the way uh, of what you're trying to do. Um, but as far as primary criteria, there's really only one thing that matter, uh, that's important, and that is I, I need to have enough leverage on this side of the tool rest uh, to be able to control the tool. Because anytime I, uh, I take a tool to a moving piece of wood, uh, there's going to be some downward pressure uh, on that cutting edge. And I need to make sure that I have enough leverage on this side of the tool rest to be able to uh, control any kind of downward force on this side of the tool rest, on the work side of the tool rest. So in other words, for every inch I'm hanging the tool over the tool rest, I need so many inches on this side. Now the only turner I can remember ever quoting a specific ratios is a turner named Stuart Batting. So I've adopted his ratios uh, for various tools and for cutting tools that is any kind of tool that you're going to be using bevel support uh, so gouges, uh, skews, parting tools, bidons, anything of that nature um, he uses a 5 to 1 ratio so in other words for every inch I'm hanging over the tool rest I need 5 inches on this side of the tool rest and that can be uh, part of the tool as, and plus the handle um, so uh, as an example on this bowl gouge if I want to hang this bowl gouge, uh, if I want to reach into a bowl, it's fairly deep, and I go five, let's say I hang this uh, tool over five inches, that means I need 25 inches on this side of the tool rest to be able to maintain uh, control. And you can see, uh, in order to accommodate that, that, that case, uh, my tool handle needed to be uh, a, a, a 20 inches long. That's a pretty long tool handle. Now I know a few people might be wondering, because I've seen it uh, talked about on a couple different wood forums, uh, what's the deal with my short-handled skews? Um, is this an exception to the rule or what's going on here? Well, with a skew you're always working very close to the tool rest. 
So I don't need to come over the tool rest very far. The only time you come out fairly far is if you're pay, uh, p uh, paring off the end uh, of a piece of work. And usually then, when I get to about three inches, I'm starting to think about going to something else like a gouge. And so even there, with a little bit of space, uh, uh, and plus the inch and a half to the center, I'm not even getting to two inches over the tool rest. And if I measure this tool, uh, assuming two inches over the tool rest, tops, uh, that means I need 10 inches on this side, or uh, 10 plus 2, an overall tool length of 12 inches. And the handle is more than long enough to accommodate that 5 to 1 ratio. Now, of course, a longer handle wouldn't hurt as far as leverage is concerned. So, again, why do I keep such short handles on my skews? And the reason it has to do with... Um, because uh, when, I, when I cut from left to right, um, I tend to have the handle is over uh, behind the cut. And so I find a long tool handle will get in the way. I'd rather have it short so I can get in front of my stomach. Uh, this is especially true when you turn beads uh, from left to right. Um, if I have a long tool handle, I have to stand pretty far away and I, I can't see uh, what's going on as I'm turning a bead from left to right. Uh, when I have, if I can put myself in front of the tool, I can actually get back some of that visibility. Uh, with a gouge, that visibility is not an issue because when I turn beads from left to right, the handle tends to be forward uh, of the cut. And uh, although it, it does get in the way coming the opposite way, visibility is not a problem. I still have a line of sight. So there's the big answer to why I like short skew handles. All right, what about conventional scrapers? Unlike cutting tools uh, that don't absorb the full brunt of the force uh, as leverage, uh, with conventional scrapers, um, because we're always using them flat in a tool rest, that means we're always using a, a wide cutting angle. In other words, uh, the angle that's formed by the direction of the wood uh, making contact with the cutting edge, in this case the burr, is close to perpendicular. Uh, as well with conventional scrapers, remember we don't want to uh, rub the bevel, so we have it slightly downhill. And what that means is that any force absorbed by a conventional scraper is 100% leverage force. Uh, and so we need to use a higher ratio uh, for conventional scrapers. And once again, I defer to Stuart Batty, and he uses 7 to 1 for conventional scrapers. So in other words, for every inch I have on this side of the tool rest, I need a whopping 7 inches uh, on this side. So that means if I hang this tool over, uh, just three and a half inches over, uh, that means I'm going to need a whopping 24 and a half inches on this side of the tool rest. And so for this tool, that means I had to use a 20 inch handle. Um, now uh, I could have gone, if I wanted to go another inch, that means I'm going to have to add another seven inches on this end of the tool and now I've got a 27 inch uh, tool handle. And that's pretty big. And what happens is at some point, that extra length starts being unusable because I can no, no longer hold on to the, the end of that tool handle. Uh, now, if you were doing uh, an open bowl, one solution would be to try to get the tool rest closer to the work so I didn't have to hang over the tool so far. Um, but if that's not an option and you still need to go further over the tool rest, uh, it's time to start looking at hollowing tools, uh, some kind of tool that actually anchors the handle uh, mechanically, uh, something like a Jameson tool or something like that. Uh, similar to the skew, if I have a conventional scraper that I don't need to use too far over the tool rest, then I don't need an extraordinarily long handle. So this is the, uh, this is the scraper I use a lot for doing a shear scraping, but I'll also often use it as a conventional scraper on the bottoms of bowls. Um, so just for fun, working backwards uh, on this tool, I'm going to start with the overall tool length, which is 16 inches. And since I need seven parts in one part, so divided by eight, uh, 16 divided by eight is two inches. So I can hang this tool of the tool rest by two inches and still have my 14 inches on this side. So I didn't need a very long tool handle to be able to use this tool like that. And finally, uh, negative rake scrapers. Uh, if you remember from the video on negative rake scraping, uh, this negative rake uh, causes the tool to absorb almost no force at all uh, from the wood. Uh, so little, uh, in fact, that you can actually uh, negative rake scrape directly into end grain without any problems. And because I absorb so little energy on the negative rake scraper, that means I can go the other direction uh, as far as a ratio is concerned. I can use, uh, Stuart Batty uses three to one with negative rake scrapers. So that means with this tool, I can go a whole five inches of the tool rest 
uh, and still have 15 inches on this side because it's an overall 20 inch tool uh, and not have leverage problem. Now in actuality with, with a negative rake scraper this far over the tourist you're probably going to get vibration problems um, bef long before you're going to get leverage problems. So generally you don't have to think too much about uh, handle length and negative rake scrapers. They're almost always long enough. Even with my little mini negative rake scrapers uh, that I use in the bottoms of bowls and other places to do detail work, um, even, with this sh even with this really short three and a half inch uh, tool handle with an overall tool length of seven inches, you know, I could hang this over one and three quarters of an inch. But in actuality, I only use this tool over to rest maybe half an inch to an inch tops because it's only, I'm in tight and I'm doing detail work. So once again, even a small handle like this on a negative rake scraper uh, is more than adequate. That concludes the survey of the tool handle length of my existing tools. Uh, but now I still have the matter of this unhandled tool that appeared earlier in the video. I need to put a handle on this. Uh, this is a tool I picked up that I didn't need. Uh, it's called an all-rounder. It's by Ashley Isles. Uh, I had some extra money and um, I'm a tool junkie and I'm curious and so I couldn't resist. Uh, it's called an all-rounder because it's supposed to be a cross between a bowl gouge, halfway between a bowl gouge and a spindle gouge. And so I just wanted to check that out. Uh, so I, first thing I have to decide is how long, how far over the tool rest do I want to hang this? Um, and I figured because I have bowl gouges uh, that I don't have to go too far. So I figured two and a half inches is about right. Um, and if I needed to go something, if I need to go further over the tool rest, I'll just go with one of my bowl gouges. Uh, now one of the things I hadn't mentioned so far, but since we were just surveying existing tools, I have to consider the fact that as I grind this, it's going to get shorter. So I have to take that into account. Now I had the same issue uh, when I did my bowl gouge. I had originally planned my bowl gouge to be always to be able to use it at least four inches over the tool rest. And so uh, if I start from here to measure my, my ratio, so I have four inches here, that means I need 20 inches here. So I have a 20 inch handle. And so I'd always be able to use this tool uh, four inches over the tool rest. Uh, but because it's new and I have this extra length that hasn't ground down yet, uh, when I first started this tool was 30 inches total. And that meant I could go five inches over the tool rest. Um, but as you can see, uh, I've lost an inch on this tool uh, just from grinding. So now uh, I'm down to about uh, four and three quarters. Um, so I need to do, take the same, same consideration into this tool. I want to plan for, for when it's shortest. So that means if I have two and a half inches um, over the tool rest, I need to go 12 and a half on the other side. Uh, so first I need to mark, uh, account for how much of this tool is going to be buried in the tool handle itself. And I usually go about an inch and a half. It would be more than enough, probably overkill, but that's, that's good. Um, and then when I line up my tool handle, that means I need to go 12 and a half inches here. And that gives me about a half an inch to spare in case I need to have some extra. Uh, when I turn this. And so now I can work backwards again and see when is this tool is brand new, how far can I go over the tool rest. So my overall tool and the length initially is about 19 inches. So I, I can hang the tool over about three inches, maybe a little bit more. But before I let you go and I get started on this tool handle, uh, I just want to say one more thing. Um, even though we spent a lot of time in this video talking about uh, ratios of, for tool handles, uh, as far as surveying tools and then in this case, you know, planning out how long a tool to be. Uh, when you get back to the business of turning, uh, forget about that completely. Um, it's really just a guide to figure out how long your tool handle should be. Uh, when you're turning, um, what you really want to be doing is listen, listening to the tool. Um, if I'm taking light cuts, you know, I might be able to go much further over the tool rest. Um, and when I'm going heavy, uh, not so far. And so listen to the tool. If the tool starts vibrating, uh, that's a clue that you're too far of the tool rest. And you either need to get the tool rest closer to the work or go with a bigger tool. <laughs> <laughs>